Hi, I'm Stephen Hare from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the Mikan riser from Mybo. I've got a few here, so I'm interested in this. This is an English company, so made in the UK. They have their own CNC machining, and apparently they do the paintwork themselves. And some of the things that interest me about this bow is the paintwork, because it's apparently the same as what Hoyt use on their paintwork. So this is what comes in. It comes in a sleeve. There's some instructions in here. Now I'm going to talk a bit about barebow recurve archery and something I haven't I've been too scared to do myself so maybe one day I'll get to try that but I'm a little bit scared because I find archery hard enough as it is. But I'm going to say barebow archery in Australia, maybe around the world, is becoming even more popular than Olympic recurve archery. So take that in consideration. This um, is the blue. So with Bebo recurve archery, there's no sights, so you can't fit sights to it. No clickers, basically stick an arrow rest on, plunge a button. The grip feels like a win and win grip. It's a very, you know, put your hand in that sort of position. It's kind of high. I think the riser weighs 1300, but I'll put up the specs up there. It's got the tunability down here, which is a push-pull mechanism. So a little screw in here, screw in there, so it's push-pull. Limb bolts are interesting, so, you know, some limb bolts like this, they're curved upwards here, so that way the edge doesn't stick in and cut into the limb, so that's quite nice. Um, with a barebow riser, you want it to be balanced downwards, so you want the weight down here, because you don't want the riser to kick up, kick up like that when you shoot. So generally with barebow, what they do is they put the weights down low. This has the ability to fit a weight inside the riser here. It's a specific weight for the mican. Rough price on this bow is twelve hundred Australian dollars. So in America that would be around seven eight hundred dollars, um, and the weight itself is I think about one hundred and seventy Australian dollars, about one hundred and twenty American dollars. Um, it comes in a whole bunch of great colors. So the finish, this is kind of neat, and it reminds me of stuff done by Toe Point. And I'm not going to say which one came first because I I insult people by saying which one came first. I don't know. It just reminds me of the toe point kind of finish. They do this. I think it looks nice. The edges are rounded, so they're not sharp. Um, the machining looks to me to be first class. I can see no imperfections at all. And I don't know if that's the paint work fi um, fixing it up. But generally, my understanding is when they machine a riser, the more they go through it the cleaner it is and this is very very clean there's no sharp edges it's all well rounded it's a beautiful beautiful finished riser and as far as I'm concerned it's it's one of the nicest looking risers um, that I've seen I think this shape looks really really nice um, so let's just I'm going to open up some other colors um, and then I'm going to compare the Hoyt riser to it because for me I feel this paint is better than any other paint that I've seen um, people are going to say well, it's the same I just it just looks so deep it looks so well finished so I've got sangria which is like a red I've got desert sand, I've got a ruby red, and I've got a lemon zest. So I'm just going to grab out the tit titanium to show you, and then we're going to compare the Hoyt. Um, I'm sure I've got a Hoyt up there. So, titanium. It just is a really beautiful, in my opinion, a really beautiful finish. Now this is a family business, as my understanding is. The dad who used to own it has been taken over by the son, which is fantastic. My dad used to deal with my bow. Um, I haven't dealt with my bow um, purely because I didn't think I had enough volume to get shipping containers in of the product. Um, they do do a fairly big range of stuff: sights, compound bows, target target bows, bare bows. Um, they do targets, quivers. The quivers are obviously coming out of China. I'm saying that, not knowing that, but I'm guessing they come out of China. But um, it looks beautiful. Now I want to compare it to the Hoyt finish because 
To me, I think it looks better than the Hoy. And that's just from me remembering the Hoy and seeing that riser, I'm going, this is amazing finish. And I'll show you what the weights look like. Um, so twelve hundred dollars. How's that compared to other Bebo specific risers? Um, your other Bebo specific risers, Decut does a cheap one. It's a machine riser. I'm going to say around four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, this is a Hoyt riser here. Right, so this is the same finish. You can see the curves here are very, very similar, but the edges here are not as good in my view to the Maibo. It's a sharper edge, edge. here is a sharper edge, here's a sharper edge. It's like, it's not like it's bad. Just to me, I think that put the, to me, the Maibo looks like a better finished product. And that's not taken away from the Hoyt. I think the Hoyt is a really nice product. But just when you see the Maibo, you're like, this, this thing is just spot on. Now, I don't know why this paintwork is good. But for me, the, the paintwork on the Maibo just looks deeper. And I don't understand why. I don't know if it's different coats they put in. It's, and I can't see any imperfections. I was going to say I can't see any imperfections on the on the Hoyt, just here. See there, there's a line going up. Now that's a paint finish. Um, it's not a machining mark. It's just a paint finish. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a definitely a like a mark there. It just the paint doesn't look as deep as the Maibo and. People are going to say I'm a Hoyt hater. I'm just trying to compare like with like. It's a good finish. I just, the Maibo is the best of that type of finish I've ever seen. Now, if you want to argue that Win and Win has better paint, better paint on their risers, I'm not going to argue that point because the Win and Win paintwork is amazing. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. It's like a Formula One race car. It is, in my opinion, the best finish riser in the business um, but the Hoyt is nice the Maibo I think just brings it to another another level with the edges the deepness of the colors the range of colors they've got so many colors and I always think to myself why can't Hoyt do those colors um, and I'm gonna say the Chinese company Jiangxing do like painted risers I'm like why can't you do all these colors and they couldn't be bothered for the price point they will do it if you have a hundred of them made but on a price point, they won't do it. And I think it's fantastic that Maibo just produce, I'm going to say 20 colors, um, because it appeals to lots of different people. And I'm going to say again, I throw it in all my videos, it really doesn't matter on the quality of the riser. And I'm like, I feel like hitting myself for saying that. When it comes to people buying a product, they generally want a color. So they're like, I want a purple bow. What color, What bows do you have in purple? And I have to go through this entire row, row here of recurve risers to find a purple riser. And I generally find like a couple and I'm like, well, here's the two and here's the two price points. I cannot tell you how often that occurs. It's probably every day. Um, I have to go through this whole range based on color. Um, so it's a quite a big range of bows. Um, let's go and look at the weights um, and I'll show you what they look like and how they bolt in because it's very unique. Now we had big shipment in today from Fivix over there. Now the problem is people get angry at me. Um, like I had a person get angry, he placed an order Monday night or Monday afternoon and then on Wednesday it hadn't been shipped and left me a bad review. Now one of the reasons for that is because customers come into the shop um, and so you're stuck with customers all day. Um, another reason is your staff are attending a funeral and another reason is your staff are sick with the virus. Um, and the other reason is Monday is your busiest day because you got the orders from the whole weekend. Now customers don't take that as an excuse and they drop bad reviews on you because the order wasn't done within, within um, a certain time period. 
um, and I've got all shipments coming in and a lot of those shipments will have orders in it for other stock that's people have been waiting for and you try and fill those why you've got customers coming in why you've got phone calls why you've got big big orders and I'll just show an order because people just don't get it and I try and do these videos so people understand so behind there is a big order that that could that pallet of stuff is going out to a shop in Australia um, it takes time to put that order together. We had to go through every one of those boxes to make sure everything was in stock because we don't want the customer getting and going, oh, this one's missing or something. So they have to go through the whole lot. They then have to put it together. Then they have to go and get freight rates for this shipment. That will take a couple of days to get freight rates because you put it out for quote and then people come back to you. Um, so it's a bit of a process. Now, originally with the mic and, it's gone off on track again. Originally with Mikan, the Mybo Mikan, it came in a whole bunch of colors and I thought people would go for the matching colored weight. So I thought, I get an orange riser, people want an orange colored weight. So I was like, I'm on top of this, I'll just get all the color weights that match the risers. Well, then I'm informed by people that know they want contrasting colors. Why didn't I know? Because I'm obviously not very smart. Um, so if you order a orange, an orange riser, you'd probably want a black weight or he's considering going for a titan weight. And I'm like, white would look nice or, you know. Um, so generally people want contrasting because I've obviously got an orange weight for an orange bow, but people want contrast. Um, again, color is important. I can't stress it enough. And at the time when I ordered all these weights, I ordered everything they had in stock. They had no black weights, and at the moment I have more weights than they have in stock, so because I ordered them all. Um, so <laughs> it's people don't kind of, I think people don't understand that manufacturers don't, when I say they don't sell a lot, they make up, let's say, 10 bows and then they hope to sell them. And they might just sit there, and then someone comes along like me and goes, I'll take, I'll take them. Then they're out of stock and then they've got to make them again. And to make them takes time because they've got to machine them all. They've got to go through all that process, which takes time and the whole process starts again. So it's very common for a manufacturer to have heaps of stock, not be able to sell it and then be out of stock because someone just takes the whole lot. Um, so same applies for me. I find when I've got heaps of stock, no one orders it. And when I have none of it, I seem to have heaps of people asking for it. Why that is, is beyond me, but it's absolutely the way it is. So that's the mic and weight. They sort of screw into the back here, the weights. Um, it comes with a little um, bit of padding behind it um, that you attach so it doesn't make any rattling noises, but it's quite a nice thing. Um, it's machined, it looks, looks quite nice. Oh, they weigh 350 grams, which is written on here, which is nice. It's a very, very good thing. Um, so I'll finish the video and saying we do, let's say 50 orders a day. Our time frames, we're doing orders, the average order this week, and that's with a funeral, it's with um, a funeral in the family, person being sick, and really busy in the shop. We're averaging 12 hour turnaround, and that's for all the orders processed this week, which is pretty amazing, because if you order right now, I can't physically do it in 12 hours because all my staff are off now and it'll be like tomorrow nine o'clock so but we average a 12 hour turnaround on orders and we get out about 50 a day so um but some days we don't but we generally do a fair few but yeah we're almost on top of them all at the moment so anyway i'm stephen ham from archery supplies that's the mybo mikan uh, riser now a lot of people because I'm going to go off the average Jack Nathan's um, podcast that I did the other day with him look a lot of the American shops don't stock bare bow risers and I'm going to say that if you don't stock stuff as far as if you don't stock trad stuff if you don't stock target stuff if you don't stock recurve stuff because the majority of your business is 3d hunting archery 
you're never going to get that market because you'll never have it, if that makes any sense at all. When my dad had a shop, he was like, well, I'm going to stop Martin and Gold Tip and that's it. I'm not going to worry about the Target stuff. I'm not going to do that. Someone else, they can get their stuff overseas. I don't care. You are never going to have that market if you don't have it in stock and you won't build that market. By me stocking Target recurve stuff, by me stocking Bebo stuff, by me stocking Trad stuff, by me stocking all this stuff, then you create demand for it and you become a center where people come to to get the stuff. It doesn't mean you have everything because, you know, like at the moment I'm out of stock, you know, of a site. Well, it's not that site's not made anymore, but I can list the items I'm out of stock of at the moment. But, but it means that generally you have something that will satisfy a customer's demand. So if they wanted a five pin hunting site with a dovetail system, I will have one in stock of some brand and I've probably got three or four in stock that will meet that criteria. Um, but it still might, the customer might still not be happy with the options I have, right? So but the thing is you've got stuff that will help people out. If you don't stock it in your only stock, I'm gonna say the Matthews Lift because that's a big selling bow. Um, then you can't get the other sales. So the more you stock, the more you'll sell um, and start off small with stuff. Like I got this in just because I was like, look, it looks pretty cool. I think some people will buy them. Um, and again, I'm gonna say it's a big, big risk. I could have brought Bitcoin instead and the Bitcoin would have gone up more than these bows, more than I'm gonna make on the sale of these bows if I make all the sales. So if I sell out of all those bows, I would have made more by just buying Bitcoin. So think about that. Okay, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching, bye.